that's the pattern. That's the, that's the secret to success. Did I upset you? I was pissed off. The job of a coach on camera is to transform that person right now. When people feel you actually care, mm -hmm. it changes everything. Fire is gonna be coming soon. I promise, ladies and gentlemen. What's up, Believe Nation? It's Evan. I believe in you, and this channel is designed to be a part of your daily success routine. I have decided to blow up. I've decided to get my channel to 10 million plus subscribers. I've decided to be a household name because I think that the Believe message needs to be spread more around the world. I'm taking you guys on my journey, and in this episode of My Climb to 10 Million, I sit down with Hank Norman, the media guru behind people like Grant Cardone, Mel Robbins, and others, and we talk and we go deep in helping me become a better on-air coach. Hope you guys enjoy. So ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Hank Norman, how you doing, man? Good, how are you? Give us, wow, good, I'm good, man. It's very, it's a subdued Hank Norman. It's, it's, the fire is gonna be coming soon. I promise, ladies and gentlemen. Hank, quick, quick intro, like give the audience a quick 30 seconds on what you do. I don't like saying I'm a brand builder because that puts me in a category with brand builders and I'm a, I'm a coach, I'm a confidence coach. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a person who helps you really figure out who you are and what you do and how to tell the audience and make, the, make them feel your passion for your thing. I'm that. That's it. He turns people into stars. You want to be a star, you go with Hank Norman. So I want to be a star. You know, we, we've worked, uh, how long we worked? How long we know each other? That's a great question. A long time. What's missing in my game? How do I get to my household well, name? What I want to talk about before, this isn't just me coaching you. I see us completely as equals. Like 99.9% of the stuff you're saying, I was like, he's 100% right. He's 100% right. I wish I was saying that. Evan says it so like, we're 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 a lot alike in many ways we do similar things for clients in similar ways like we're we're a lot alike and so i think it's helpful and i'd love to talk about it and i think it would be interesting so people understand that you're so you're working with two market media steve and i own two market media steve's help, as you said helping on the business side and i'm more of a media coach like i coach mel robbins from Z, mel had done zero media and now mel's a big star um so I coach people and I like the, I like that part. And so you, we're doing this show to show people your growth and your transparency. And I think the beginning of that, the beginning of our relationship and how rocky it was or whatever it was, whatever your experience was, and I'll share what I can recall, um, I think is a big piece of it because in getting, in you reaching out and getting coaching and having Steve and me coach you, that was the first thing I think almost everyone goes through there was resistance there was tension there was in you and between like whatever was between us also i had part in and i change as a can you help me change as clients do and people do i changed how i communicate so that we could actually so i could help you and I'm just interested from your perspective, what, I, we never talked about this, what do you recall of that time, eight, seven, eight years ago, the tension between us, the reason you kind of started talking to Steve more, because it, it was, I'm sorry that that happened, I hate, I, I, it's not uncommon for me, like, I, people have that, I just did a Facebook post and people are telling me how classless it was, like, people, my, I get it, my energy or my approach feels how it feels to, well, I get that, and I'm trying to not have that be a thing, so I'm also interested, this is growth for me, that's what I mean, this isn't just about save Evan, like, hey, save Hank. Turn it around, um, sure, okay, so I was on the cusp of my YouTube career, my best video had 100,000 views in a year, and that was my best video, and I was super proud of it. And I had just come up with Believe. This was a genesis. This is like I, was, I just come up with Believe as my one word and what I'm going to build my business around. And can I, I coach you inside this answer, Ev? Oh, can you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Go for it. For TV, for this thing, what I want and what I want – having watched your products and one of the videos we're going to talk about you coaching is I want the answer first, then I'll listen to this story. Okay. Were, did you, were you pissed off at me? Did you hate me? Like what, what, tell me what you felt and then I'll listen. Then I'm ready to receive the story. But I just want to know like what, what happened? Did, were you mad? Did you not like me? Did you, were you mad? Like, did I upset you? I was pissed off. I felt you were, way off way off in my information or way off in how i was talking to you or typing to you both and i decided to go and do it anyway and then we'll just see 
So now do we get to the context? <laughs> he told me before we even press record here, you're like, say anything, you're not gonna upset me. And I'm like, yeah. that's how we, it was like, well, wait a minute, that's not the Evan I know from eight years ago. You've sure. changed radically. That's a big change. To be in the media, what Evan has gone through from eight years ago till today, that's a huge piece of even what we talk about today and refining him, receiving information, whether it's from, I mean, obviously I, I, maybe I wasn't a trusted source. So maybe you didn't trust me for that information. So that shift is super important. You have to have that. You have to be will. You have to be in a place to receive regardless of who's giving you that. I hate moms coaching people because your mom doesn't know what's best for your Facebook page. But okay. if you seek out someone who you respect or is an expert in, the, in their field, then even if you don't agree with them, you got to put coaching is tough. Like it's this, this piece. And I love that you're in a different space is super confronting. That piece is the biggest piece that I think anyone will learn from this journey you're on. Okay. Great. Now what? We want more story? So, yeah. So I had a video that I put out around Believe that I had uh, an emotional attachment to. I put a lot of work into this video. Um, it was a six and a half minute video. And I sent it to you because you're in the industry and I respected your opinion and I wanted your feedback on how to make it better. And you said it was too long, basically. You wanted a one minute video, one and a half minutes, something super short and six and a half minutes was too long. And I didn't agree, wrote back, wanted to be, I wanted to release it basically as it is. <laughs> then you went down this path of like, you don't understand how the internet works um, and stuff like that uh, to me. And then I'm like, okay, I, this, I don't know, this guy doesn't get it. So it's like, okay, I'm just going to post it as it is. It ended up crushing. And I think we're coming from two different perspectives in that I'm getting YouTube and the algorithm and how to win on YouTube when you're talking communications and, and the best is like how to actually make those two fit together. Um, and we're both, that's what makes us an interesting match different perspectives. Exactly. Yeah. For me, it was buried a long time ago. Cause you wrote, you wrote some email to me where you, you said that was like the most egregious error of my career or something. Um, and that was it for me. Like I didn't, yeah. it didn't bother me. And, and then, you know, I followed you on Twitter and shared some of your stuff and we go back and forth a bit. And I was pumped to do this series with you as well. Me too. I respect the hell out of you. And when you say that, it, uh, now I, I mean, that as a coach and, and for clients, that's what we do. The, the, uh, the initial onboarding is the, the boot camp we put people through is that just get clear and concise. So the biggest piece, and we'll get into it even in, because that, this concept comes up in long form, in your coaching video, that, like I just stopped and said, give me the answer first. That's the training of a minute, two minute video. Yep. You got it, like you can make six, ten, I don't care how long a video is at all, but being clear and concise and putting that at the, and having that opinion, that lead line at the top, that is the media. Like, Telling people, I'm going to tell you this, and tell it's it's English. It's what we learn in English class in high school. Write write a sentence that says what you're going to talk about. Write a paragraph explaining that, and then write the same sentence recapitulating what you said. Yeah. That's it's the same idea. It's just in video. You got to hit them with the opinion at the top. Say it. Set the what you what you do. Actually, you get all of this because what I love about the um, coaching video is you have that little teaser open like you I know what I'm going to get when I watch that that's what that's what brings me into it it's that same idea it's just the frequency every time you start something in a, in a longer form or it, that's the pattern that's this that's the secret to success if I can get you to tweak anything just like I had you do before you, you we started this conversation it's like give me the hook Hook me in so I know what's going to happen. Then I'll stick around for that thing. I think especially in the coaching videos and the coaching sessions, I don't do that. So I think that's really helpful. I think when my set videos, I focus on trying to do that of leading with a powerful opinion and then getting totally. context and backing it up. Um, now, maybe I'm not doing as best as I could, but that's an intention at least going in. Yes. Coaching ones, I don't. So, right, so. 100%. It's it, glaringly obvious except for your edits which you edit it to use that f format to get me in and then once you start that video yeah uh, you guys start bantering and it takes a little while i mean we can watch it or just talk about it i mean i can re i remember it fairly well sure i don't have any context for that other than your teaser what i expected what i would want as a viewer to, to make that better 
is I want exactly what we just talked about. I want the encapsulated, like what's going to happen? Or I need that montage or I need you to say, I need him to say, what does he end up saying? I, does passion find, he asks you some question. Does passion find you or do you want to play it? Or do just, it? How do you find your passion? Do you stumble into it or is there a way to find it? Yeah. And so he finally says that, like for me, I would want something telling me, like now I know what this, at least that piece of the conversation is about. How do you find passion? So I would, or can you stumble upon passion? I'd rather have it phrased as an opinion, your answer. The yes or no, honestly, would be my preference in that. Because that, again, that's starting with that lead. Now that's the, that's the takeaway. Mm -hmm. Like you're awesome. You have a lot of takeaway. Like your advice is actionable. You're just, you're just still other people. Like I love your brand. And obviously a lot of people do. The more you take those things and bring them into like, particularly this coaching, it's finding a way to host. It's a finding a way. Coaching on air is, as I wrote to you earlier today, that's my specialty. Like making Mel a great coach on air was one of the hardest things I've ever done. Okay. He was very resistant. It's and hard to do. What's the resistance that people have to get better? I'll give you the rule and then, I'll then we can talk about you and Mel or anybody. Yeah. The rule is, and I'm visual, so that's why I have to, when you're sitting across from somebody, yeah. and I get a lot of experts, doctors, yoga instructors, any, that's used to working with people one-on-one. -on -one. That, in a real world setting, it's you and that person, and the advice is for them and only for them, the person you're talking to. Yep. When you're coaching someone sitting in a chair next to them, that coaching is not for that person. That coaching for the person watching. Okay. So having that objective view of this is no longer just about the person sitting across from me. This is about the person watching us. Now you actually have to deliver for them. And what Mel didn't want to do and what Mel didn't like doing was like, Mel, you have to break this person down. Like this person isn't just here for my entertainment. You do have to fix them and they do have to move from here to here. The job is to actually fix them, to change their perspective, to get them to see different, to get them to actually do different in the moment. Here's all the rules. You're supposed to be changing that in that X amount of time you're sitting down with that dude. He has to change. That's a story. The media relies on the undercurrent that is all media movies to anything is story is, is Joseph Campbell information. There's got to be a point of tension. There's got to be a point of resolution. You got to tell a story. And the story is that person's transformation. I'm not only going to be entertained, I'm going to learn how to do it. You're teaching me and entertaining me. And the entertainment in the media is more important than the information. And, and why do you think that that is not as relevant if the cameras weren't on? Like, would you still not have to break somebody down? Would you still not want to have story? No, because in most experts' daily lives, like working with shrinks is horrible for me. Working with doctors is – shrinks are really hard. People that – their job is to just get you to uncover things slowly, and they want to see you on a recurring date. Like, they want to see you for a year. I want I, the media wants that person in and out in 10 minutes. I want to be, I want you to be done in 10 minutes. Sure. So it goes against all this training. So as a coach though, that's what you want anyway, right? Like Hank Norman, the coach, you don't want to sit with me for, for five years and slowly get stuff out. So I'm trying to understand Hank yes. Norman, the coach, how is Hank Norman, the coach on air different than Hank Norman, the coach off air? I'm not personally that different in person than I am on air. But the show I do on my Facebook page, The Media Mentalist, is just the version that I want people to see that sometimes does take me weeks or months to get to. The thing we, you and I went through this, I guess. so breaking someone down to get them to actually be a media star, we're coaches for them. And sometimes that takes months for a person to, similar to our conversation about you and me in the beginning, being resistant, under, I was just miscommunicating, I w was poorly communicating that those were rules for me to help you get clear and concise and that it wasn't about blowing up the internet. It was about Evan becoming awesome and sharp and people receiving his message. And what's different is I'm, I've adopted that style with people. So I'm not all that different, but most people aren't ever coaching. So if you're a coach, if you're an expert and working with people one-on-one, -on -one, you're never thinking about what that looks like to third parties. So you, you, you've, not, you've not adopted this highlighted, entertaining way to coach. I think it's more succinct. I think it's more beneficial to your brand, even without cameras. Learning to do anything on camera is going to make 
your, your, your life better, your business better. It's going to make everything better because now you sit, you get to sit in your own audience. You get to look at you and say, oh, I could do this better. I could be more efficient. If I, now I see where the resistance comes, now I can overcome the resistance. It's an amazing tool for business growth in, inside the bubble. Not even just about the people watching and how entertained they're going to be. So I'm the same, but most people aren't. And the resistance is they don't, it doesn't feel right to them. This isn't what I know. This isn't what I do. They did like you did in a different form. They're like, I don't do it that way. And I'm not listening to you. And I'm like, okay, but we're here to do things differently. That's the whole point. Where my head is going, and maybe you're on the same path, is that that, that actually is a better way to coach. Not just to the camera, but that's actually how you should be coaching. 100%. And you can't learn it without being in the media or using the media. The media will sharp media coaching, coaching using the media on camera and watching it and showing it will make you a better coach. Because you, you can yes. watch it back. Because you can watch it back. Yeah. And you'll listen to people and people like me, someone will comment. Like I honestly only made it halfway through your coaching session because I was like, I can't. I can't. I'm, I'm, For sure. Yeah, I get it. Because it's got to be sharper. Great. So, so bring sharpness in every conversation, period. At every juncture. When, when he asked you how to do what your advice was or whatever, and you went into, I have three things, and you started with a speech. Right. I was like, dude, I don't want a speech. You want the opinion. I, I, I want you to teach. Make him do those things right in that moment. Use those same, the same things you're going to say. Don't speech, teach. Leave I don't want to hear you. And then teach. Yeah, so... I don't know what your answer was because I didn't stick around or whatever. Passion, it, it, but you can find it, you won't find it. It doesn't matter. Whatever your answer is, the answer, boom. You're never going to find your passion by doing nothing or something, whatever. Answer, opinion, top. Now you go into your first thing. is like, dude, and you take that first, what was one of your points or your first point in the thing? Do you remember what your takeaway was? Or your the first one was your, your who, your, your most important core value. What's your one word? Yeah, now you do that with him. Great. Do you want me to break it down in advance or just show what's happening? You could, but I, I personally don't. I, I don't think you need it. I think you go, here's the first thing you need, dude. What's, so you're busy. So now, but now you, now you got to keep me. And when I say me now in this context, I'm me. The audience. I'm the yep. single person watching you, which yep. is the other tip that yep. this whole thing is just for that one person watching. Even if you have a million people watch the video, we all only consumed it one-on-one. -on -one. You got to know only one, one person's watching that thing. You go to this guy. So, what do you, what do you, what do you do? Cause now I'm, now I'm producing him to say things for me, for the audience. Okay. So I'm, pro I'm producing him to explain. So everyone understands where he's trapped. So we can all help him, me as Evan and me as the audience together can experience seeing this guy talk about what's going on in his life. So we can see how you help someone pick their word. Because that's what I want to get out of this conversation. That's what I want to get out of this piece of this video. In this coaching video I'm watching of Evan Carmichael and this dude, I want to know how to find my word. I don't want to hear a speech about finding words. I want to see it done so that I can do it. Okay, so, so this one missing piece I'm trying to understand. He's going to ask me a question like, do you just stumble into your passion or can you find it? I, you want me to lead with something like, you can absolutely find it and I'm going to show you how to do it. Yes, or me. so my, me doing my version of yep. you is yep. you, you can stumble into your passion. What are you doing right now, today, that lights you up? And now he starts talking about the thing. You go, what's one word that describes how you feel about that type of work you're doing? And he's like, yeah, yeah. Like, no, here. and we see you guys, I see you do it. Now I go, now I'm, now I'm going in my head. Cause now I'm like, oh, these guys are doing, he, Evan's doing it. Evan's fixing him. That's everything. Now I see Evan is a fixer, a healer, a coach. And I have the technique I'm doing, as you guys are doing it, I'm like, what lights me up? I got, so how do I say that in a word? If you're not role modeling, if you're not actually doing it, the, the job of a coach on camera is to transform that person right there and right now. Take action in that moment and get them to do it. Everything. I mean, with Mel, it was awesome. Someone was like, I have a problem with my wife. We're like, what's your wife's number? We call her up, get her on the phone. Like that was, with Mel and I did a radio show, much like this, every single day on AM. And it was like, anybody's like, I have a problem with my husband. Get him on the line. 
Let's do it. Like, what's your problem? Your wife, your husband, get them on the line. Do it right now. It's not just entertaining. It's the fix. You want to fix the problem? Fix it now. Yeah. No one's actually fixing in the moment. That's the big fix to coaching. Coach, fix it. I love it. The education of the breakdown comes after or is yes. not there at all? Come yeah. Down. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Through. We're going to go. So we go through the process. I don't even say we're going to go through a process. I just lead them through Do the it. process. Yeah. We get a result. And at the end, I say, here's what we did. The well, get a result. There's a lot inside the get the result piece. Right. So overall, what I'm wanting to see is what I want. Now let's zoom out many layers. Yep. What I need at the top before that first question or sometime now, because I don't really care about the, 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 I don't care about the order, but these things have to happen. I have to know how he feels really stuck. I need the story of knowing where he is right now so that at the end of this show, I see him, I see the transformation. I feel it. I know he's fixed. Without the beginning story, I won't recognize an end. So I need, I need where he's stuck. I need his feet. And I don't need words. This is where dudes get it wrong every time. Because dudes are like, so what's wrong with you? He's like, I don't, I'm not making enough money. Okay, let's fix that. No. How is your life up because you don't have enough money? What's really going on for you emotionally? What's the story? Not what's the facts. What's the story? And when you get that story out of this guy, so rather than, I wouldn't have allowed this guy to go, can you just fall into the, you're not running my show, shut up. This isn't your show to ask questions. I ask questions. Second of all, you're here for a reason, dude, because you're stuck somewhere. Where are you stuck? And how does that make you feel? Because until that person taps into how they are, they're not going to fix it. What we, what we get busy doing in our lives when we're stuck is we don't change because we don't allow ourselves to access that pain. We pretend like it's not a big deal. You're, you're taking it as your responsibility, Evan, which is why you're in your next level person, because you're taking it as your responsibility to rip those bandages off and go in. That's every, that's it. Yeah. yeah. There's always a reason behind why they're coming in besides what they lead with always, which is why I love the one-on-one. Because if I could fix one thing that has nothing to do with my coaching to you is, okay. I've given you three or four or five compliments and you just, it's, it's hard to give you compliments because you either don't like accepting them or you don't accept them or you don't feel deserving or you, it actually kind of, it comes off smuggy to me. Okay. Like it, and I know, I know you personally, we hang out together. You're a nice guy and you're, you're, you're warm. Like, I want to feel that. The biggest growth for you is these little tiny things that's going to make you, what's going to make videos more successful is the more relatable you get as a human being to the audience. Okay. Do you agree? Um, relatable, yes. I'm, I'm definitely open to it. Compliments for me, what, I want to be told that I suck. Like, I think I'm great already. So, so I want to hear why I suck and how to get better, um, especially when doing something like this. So, so can time. we talk about that? Let's talk about yeah, that for a second. Yep. That idea I get, I totally understand. It's not media friendly because nobody's like that. I don't want to hear I suck. I don't want to watch a dude that wants to hear he sucks. I want to watch a human being. That's a person that has trouble taking criticism a little bit or it stings and he admits where it stings. And then when he gets compliments, it's nice or embarrassing. It's a, it's human. It's emotional. It's feeling. You're, you've chopped off the feelings on both ends and we're in the business and we're having a discussion of selling emotional impact. Yeah. How you impact people. You have the facts, dude. All we're really working on right now, this show and the, all the, everything we talk about in detail is how to make you more access, more emotion, how to care, how to show me you care about that guy and present it in, in an edible way for an audience in, in, in digestible pieces. How do I work on that? I think that comes out best when I'm angry at somebody and then we work through it and the love that I have for them actually ends up carrying them through because I'll sit with somebody and, and show them more love than anybody in their life yeah. and then still give them the answer that's the hard push forward. That's when it shows itself best. If somebody's sitting there saying, Evan, I love your videos. Thank you so much. You changed my life. It's like, thank you. I appreciate it. Um, probably doesn't make them feel the greatest. I, I understand what you're saying. Um, so what's my to do? What's, what's my homework on that? So to do is interesting um, for you, as it has been for me. We kind of, 
I don't lack empathy. It's just I cut it off or yeah, because of my insecurities and how I was raised and I, I don't receive compliments well either. So it's, it's not a topic I'm talking about as if I'm just a coach. It's, it's been a huge part of my life. What, what I do, what I've done is because I know someone's watching this, I open up, I slow down, I open up, like I literally go in with a conscious intention of being like, I'm going to connect to this person. Ooh, I don't even like saying that. Ooh, uh, okay. That's what I change because I know the camera's recording and I know someone's watching it. I know this is a, a, a bigger thing than just how I normally would interact or coach somebody. I allow for, I allow for that, this connection. I, I changed. I'm, I'm more receiving of like and love and kindness. And also, unfortunately, the reason I shut down as a child and, and was shut down as an adult is I'm also protecting myself from the negativity, from backlash. So the more I've opened up as a coach and on camera, uh, I, I also now find when people say things negative about me, it, does, it stings more. Like it, things never used to bother me and now they do because I'm, at, I'm opening up on both sides in love and in pain and in receiving, you know, I used to never take any, would never listen to anyone criticizing. And so going into that interview, that coaching session with that guy, I would tell you to okay. stop. Don't be present. It's not, it's not exactly like, and it is not hosting a show. You're not a host. You're there to make a, you have to shift your entire intention. Literally, concentrate on how to get connected to that person and, and, and open them up, get him to trust you so much that he's going to spill all the beans, cry, lay it all on the table and say, this is what is the most thing in my life, Evan. And you've got it. Help me please. And you receive that. And you're like, Oh man, you reach over, you touch them. <laughs> and you say, thank you for telling me that. That's the, the thing that's holding you back. This is, that's all. Thank you for trusting me with this information. Like I never talked that way, but not, you know, with a daughter, like my eight year old has helped me as a coach because she was an infant and a toddler and a child. It's like, how, that's, co that's on air coaching. Be firm, but also be loving. That's a coach. All right. Well, it's on my awareness. So it's easy. It's, it's good to catch it. I'm also working with Tess, the clinical psychologist. This is a, something I could bring up with her for some practice and exercise too. I think there's really? definitely some that I lean in very well at and others that I don't. So that can well, be different. Do you know where that is or where, where that shows up for you? You're asking why, why that, why that shows yeah. up or, or what? Yeah. Like compliments. I've, I've never been, I don't, uh, I'm, I'm so focused on getting better that I don't care about the compliments. When I hit a million subscribers, I didn't even care about celebrating. My audience wanted to celebrate. So, hey, we're going to, okay, we'll do a celebration because they want to. But for me, it doesn't, doesn't mean anything. Like, it's great, your milestone, but push. Let's go. Let's keep going forward. Yeah. Are you resistant to connection or you're just streamlined so you're not doing it? So when it's with my team, I focus a lot on making sure people feel recognized and congratulating them and thanking them. And I follow everybody on my team on social. And when something happens, I say thank you. Or we get a great comment comes in from my fans uh, I'll, I'll send it off to my team so they know that the work they're doing is having an impact. Like, I think that connection is super important. And you do that because you feel it's the right thing to do or you're doing it because you know it's the right thing to do? I know that I could break that apart. What's the difference? It helped you and me answer, as, whether you in working with Tess or us together right in this moment or okay. later when you watch your uh, video, coaching video back and just the parts we just talked about is because then it's, it's knowing whether you're, when you're sitting down with somebody, how to connect. You, you may be the type of person and you, you are in many ways as we all are, which is like, just tell me what to do. And then there's this version that worked for me with this, which is just fake it till you make it. Like do those things, like telling, literally telling you to reach out and touch somebody. I tell that to a lot of people because they're put, they're so scared to connect. They don't physically connect and having somebody reach out and touch the person across from them changes the dynamic. When I tell you that single action shifts everything, it shifts crazy when people see that you feel when people feel you actually care mm -hmm. 
it changes everything. So I, mean, I asked that because I, I just wanted to know where you're blocked. Like if it didn't exist for you, then I would give you way more tangible takeaway to fake it till you make it and get there. But if you really do understand and feel like you like doing that, then this is going to, this, this, there's no co very little coaching involved. Then you just need to get on camera, coach and move into this space that you love to do anyway, which is connect and be kind and, and be grateful. And you don't need that much tangible coaching. The thing that comes to mind is I've started hugging people instead of handshakes. I hugged Steve why? in New York. You were sexy why? when I came in. Why, why though? Did you, why did you why? switch? I went to the Tony Robbins event just, bef just after I met you guys last yep. time. And um, I realized that Tony has you break down like your six human needs. And I forget what they all are and how it comes up. But, but love and significance were almost the exact same thing for me where I, he has you break down, how do you get love and how do you get significance? And they were pretty much the same, except for what I do for my wife and son, where it's pure love. But there's still even then, like I like feeling significant. So when I'm helping somebody, when you, when you list down what do you love doing and it's helping entrepreneurs and, and helping them make a breakthrough, it's love, I love it. And it's also makes me feel significant in doing it. And I wanted to try to break that pattern of love just for love. And so I said, okay, what's, a, what's a, not just thinking about it, but what's an action I can do? And I decided to do hugs over handshakes. And so people at the Tony Robbins event recognized me because of the videos and all that stuff. So everybody who came up to me, I said, I gave them a hug instead of a handshake. And people first thought it was a germaphobe because I wouldn't shake their hand. So that was fun. And then I was stumbling on my words of like, I don't even know how to introduce that. Um, so one guy I hugged and I said, I love, and that was it. Um, so, but it's still another thing when people come in and they want to shake my hand, I'll ask, Hey, can I give you a hug? And some people still don't want to hug. It's okay. And I shake their hand. I get it. And some, someone like Steve, I just make him hug me anyway. And just that practice, just that practice. I actually am very feeling person. When I took over my business, the, the, the dance business, when I bought it, I brought on a whole new team and I ended up taking on everybody's problems so much that I had to take stress pills for a week because when somebody is in stress, I, I want to help. I have to help. Uh, so I'm very empathetic from a listening point of view, I guess, but maybe not from an expression point of view, if that makes sense. It does. So a hug is a, is a form. I've been touching people more through the coaching process on their leg or on their arm. When I announced the kind of hugs over handshakes thing, I had somebody say, well, you got to watch out now because of me too. And women aren't going to be happy with that. It's like, it's, it'll be okay. Like I'm not, we're not doing anything crazy. It's, it's just a hug. It's fine. Um, so I, I'm very feeling on the receiving, but I'm not as much on the giving, which, which could help. I get how that could help. So I'm looking yeah. for, okay, if I, how do I, how do we do it right now? Coach me through it right now. Like, here's Hank giving me wisdom. I'm appreciative. How do I express that better so that you feel my gratitude for the advice and the push? Yeah, you just did it and you, had a, you, do, you do like a little squinty thing with your eye. Like, okay. You're visibly uncomfortable, which is cute, which means you're receiving it. So that's unfortunately part of you. Like, it's just being in that moment. And it's again, you, were, you, you shifted from the beginning where you were like, Hosting, hosting, hosting to now you're actually, you, you've relaxed more into this moment between me and you. Okay. That's it. You did it. And then you, you showed it, which is, I think the difference. So now you've seen both for you, a hug initiates it. And then I, you said, then you're like, Oh, it's working now. It's working for me. And you actually showed how you were feeling. We I think, and as dudes, we learn not to do that. And I had to look, I had to definitely had to learn to do that. Just saying that, even hinting at that, I'm doing that sounds like I shouldn't be said. I, I have a, it makes me not feel right. Like it's like, ew, I have to admit that I, I got, I got to show how I feel. That's weak. Yeah. What was interesting out of our, out of our dinner was, um, Steve had me write down, I wrote that like, Hey, we're going to do a, a show of you being weak or, or like what you're afraid of and expressing what you're afraid of. Um, and I, I like that night, I love taking action. You give me homework, I'll go do homework. And I made a list of the 25 things that first came to mind of when I felt weak. And I wrote back to see if I could do this, but it's not a, it's not a challenge. 
I don't worry about being weak. I'm not afraid of being weak or being vulnerable, but expressing it could come off as, I don't know, not caring. Because or not. that's the challenge. Right. In seeing you say the, like even in the video that I saw recently where you okay. set up this, like where you laid out the, the parameters, that's the, the challenge is inside that, which is to say those things and show people that even if it doesn't feel like a challenge for you, you understand that it is. That's what I need, even if it's not. And the expression. Not, yeah. You're just saying, here's my challenge, and I'm going to confront all my fears. And I'm like, oh, this guy, you can't just robot through right. how I'm going to make, make my life better. Huh? Dude, that's confronting, dude. I'm scared to do it. I'm on the same path with my own my brand, but I'm, I'm actually scared to do it. The reason you, here's the reason, I, and I'm, I'm only come to this recently. The reason you don't see that much content out of me is because I don't, I, I don't like looking at myself. It's, it's frightening or scary or weird. Like, I don't like it. So I don't do it. And I teach people to do it to blow up their brands. And I was like, why aren't you famous? Because like, I don't like, I, I, because I have a lot of, I don't like seeing myself. I don't like hearing myself. I have a lisp. When I hear myself, I, when I talk all day long, I don't think I have a lisp. When I watch myself back, I was like, this has a lisp. Well, thank you for coming on, even though you don't want to be on. I'm 50 years old, dude. What am I doing? I'm just getting, just dying. I'm just coming at it from a different angle than you are. I'm just like, I got, I, why not do it now? Like, why not, why not go that last foot? Like, I've already spoke on stages with 10,000 people. Like, I've done, I'm a, I've, I was on TV every day at Oxygen when I worked there for, I was on TV every single day for years. Like, I'm, all the things people want to do, I was like, I'm, I'm not driven to do that because I'm shy. Like, I'd rather not do that. And I'm shy because I fear somebody saying something. I fear judgment. I fear, I'm like, Ugh. But I'm like, no, I have to deal, I have to deal with that hmm. for me and for my business. I have to. Well, you've been turning up, man. I like it. It'll be more. I just feel it's hard. It's hard. It's hard. That's what I mean. I, it's easy for me to, because it's hard for me. And I, I also know how I coach people, so I know how hard it is for individuals. But it's hard. It's super hard for me. I hate it. I don't like fix. I'm not in now down to this nitty gritty. The thing you're loving doing, I do not love. What, what's that? Dealing with my feelings and confronting my fears. I don't like that. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I thought I did. Honestly, up until now in my life, I, I never thought, I didn't think I had a fear of anything. I had a whole different story in my head. I hate this. And you're helping. I, I love your content because it's like, that's exactly, you, you give me it from, because we're different, like we have different perspectives. So I'm like, oh, but I just, I do wish you did it more this way. Like, I'm about it. You're like, I, I need to be more like you and you need to be more like me. <laughs> we'll get like a Hank Evan uh, mutant. That's what we're doing. That's what this is. That's the mashup. Yeah. Um, That's why I said this isn't just me coaching you. I don't feel right about that. Like this is, this is us meeting and it, like I have great respect for you and your brand and your work ethic. And I'm excited that you, and particularly in our relationship that you're entertaining the idea of digging back in where we had a weird spot in the beginning. And I, I love you. I, and I, I love working with you and I respect you. And I had a guy, uh, oh, see how you, you ruined it. No, I'm not That's, ruining it. I'm about to say, tell an amazing story right here. You just, no, you, you didn't story. receive it in the moment, dude. You ruined it, dude. I was going to tell you a really heartwarming story. Around I didn't want a story. I wanted a moment of you turned away and you started began to, or you, again you speeched rather than just showed re re reception. All right, that's what we're working on. I appreciate you, Hank. Thank you for the love. No, you can't joke. I'm always joking. I'm not joking. No, I, I appreciate. I appreciate the honesty. I appreciate your openness. I love your content. Um, you're you're probably most active on Twitter than anywhere else, and and you're always you're always posting good stuff. I wish you, I wish you did more. You You've always said that you've been the biggest, you, you're the only person in my life that actually encourages me to do more. What people don't know is not just publicly, you write me personal emails and you're like, you should do more of that. Like you've been very supportive, dude. You're all like, you're awesome. Let's believe man. But you plus somebody else that they blow up. And if they have a great message, 
that you can amplify and spread. And that's why I'm doing this. Why, why hit 10 million? It's easy for me to be grateful and, and humble and happy and satisfied. That, that's default for me. Like it's, it's, I don't need compliments, which makes it difficult to, I, I don't care about compliments because I don't need them. I feel great about myself. I need the push to do better. So why, I don't have a Are you sure job. you feel great about yourself? Really? Yeah, I, I think so. I mean, either, either. I don't, I personally don't believe you. Okay. It, then that's the whole thing. Because I would ask Tess. I would, I would bring that up with Tess. I think that goes way deeper than us right here and now. Uh, I, don't think, I don't think you're being honest emotionally for yourself. It's either nothing or it's everything because it's a blind spot. Yes. Right? It's nothing or it's the whole thing. Correct. I'm Hank, telling you. I don't, what, I don't love myself? Hank says I don't love myself. Yeah. I think you, you're set, you have stories and words to say how you don't need compliments, but you do. Sure, of course. But that's where you're going to dig. That's the whole point, you know? I know. It always feels great to get a comp. Sure, it's amazing. You just came off of I don't need them and I don't want I them. Don't, so I that's wanna, a lie. I mean, I want to get better. I want to do more. I want to have a bigger reach. I want to spread the message. I think people need, people need what I have. Learn to open up. Learn to take compliments. Okay. That's a self-esteem issue. So making that connection. How is it a self-esteem issue? You say and live a life of I don't need compliments is a wall, is a barrier that has to go away. How do you tie that to self-esteem or self-love? What's, what's the connection that I'm missing? By losing that story and saying, I don't need them, I don't want them, and saying, and you don't have to say it out loud. You just have to, you know, I don't care what you say and I don't want to really hear it. I just want to see it. I want to see you do it. I want to feel you do it. On cat, when you're working with someone and they say something, you're like, oh, and I want to, I want to, I want to feel you feel it. That's how we feel. That's how this medium works. We have mirror neurons. When I see someone's, why you, you cry in a movie because they're crying. That's how it works. That's how the brain works. You have to do that, dude. What we're talking about is this entire exercise is literally to make Evan more human. How do you tie that back to self love? That's the connection I'm missing. Because self, it's not well. Self esteem is okay. now you're you now say I'm going to accept people's love and adulation, and I feel worthy. I'm worthy of that. But by putting that wall up and saying I don't need that, that's you. That's putting barriers up and saying I don't need anyone else. I don't need other people. I don't need human connection. I don't need that. I don't need you. So and that part's missing for me. Like that, just the way that that last few sentences. I feel like I need tons of people. But you don't act that way. You literally just said, but if you needed people, then you would allow the connection to be created, which is a complete connection. You'd be nice to me and I'd be nice to you. And when I'm nice to you, I see you receive my love. Yeah, I don't, I don't feel like I need people emotionally. Well, that's a problem, dude. Great. I understand the perspective of for people to connect with me and to me to spread my message and me to be a better coach, seeing me receive the message i can i'm th i'm there with you yes i'm not making the connection to self-esteem it's a, it, you you'll do it with tests i mean it just you when you if i don't need if you don't need something it's because you don't feel worthy of that well i think i'm better than you think i am it, 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 that is superiority in like an intellect and, and a work. Yes. Cause you have a crazy work ethic. Not just that, just, just the work that I do. Like I went to a YouTube event and I'm, I'm pounding myself super hard. on like, I need to be, do, I want to do eight videos a day, not three. I need to have even better thumbnails, even though my thumbnails are. are yes. Considered the so best. This, this is exactly why this show exists and why we're talking right now. Evan. So, and so then just, let me finish and, and you probably already have your mindset, but just for my own, like, <laughs> this is my show, Hank. <laughs> Listen up. You're right. You're right. But then they said, Hey, Evan, you're too hard on yourself. Like you, you, you're doing a really great job. Like you're crushing it. You're, you're, you've grown so much in the past year. Everybody's using your, your videos as demonstrations of best practices. You should be easier on yourself. I'm like, what are you talking about? I, I think my channel deserves to have a Nobel Peace Prize. Like, I think I have the greatest channel in the history of YouTube. I do. And I suck. Like, it's both. So, 
when somebody tells me that they think I'm great, it's awesome. I, receiving it for that for me is more like I, I want to help them. Like denying a gift is being selfish. It's a gift that you're gi you're giving me a gift, saying, "Hey, Evan, you're awesome." And if I don't recognize that, then I'm I'm being selfish. I'm not recognizing the gift. I'm denying your gift. But for me, I don't I don't I don't need it. I think I'm amazing. I think my channel is already insane, not just because of work ethic, but I think it's I think my channel is the best. YouTube channel on the planet. But it it's is. not. Well, I think it is. But I think but you're I, wrong. I don't think so. Of course you're wrong because it's not where you want it to be. Well, I, I have, I think it can be way better. I think it can be a thousand times better. We can. That's why it's not the best yet. I feel it's the best. It's not. Well, for, for some people it is. For me, it's it good. Is. It's good. It's, it's amazing. Yeah. And it can be better. Yeah, it's fine. I don't know if you're just trying to like poke me or something, but like, no, the deal I, is it's not fine. But I, you, you have to let go of I'm the best in order to get, in order to start receiving and understanding all these things on the other side of that line. I don't it's think not so. the best. That's silly. That doesn't even make sense. I think the best can always get better. Okay, well, that's not the best. It is the best. What I was going to say when I was cutting you off was yeah. this is the change. Okay. You're not at your best yet. It's not at its best yet because you're not at your best yet. Your best, is, your best is building people in. A hundred percent. I am not at my best yet. The channel is not at its best yet. It's nowhere close. And it's the best. <laughs> okay, great. I'm not going to, again, you, you like fighting over a little, that's a, that's a weird thing to fight over for to, to to want to claim and keep. I don't, okay. I, I give up. But I think it's silly to hold that idea. Because I, I, what I want you to see is in, you are on a journey to better yourself. So yeah. now you get to admit and feel the foibles of a normal human being, which is the relatedness, the relationship I want to create with you by watching your awesome material. Because your material is very information dense, which is awesome. What we're talking about here is the personality piece. People sure. liking you and following you because they like Evan. That requires letting them in, saying, I'm not the best. I'm not the best. Okay. And you don't have the best channel, so yes. But I do have the best channel. It's right. both. Okay. I, I, I don't think coaching-wise, you can yeah. keep it. Coaching-wise, it's hard to wrap your head around the ideas I'm trying to hand you if you're going to hold on to your words because in letting that go, it'll, it'll make you human because it doesn't. Saying you're the best is weird and off, but like, plus it's not even true. So it's even double weird. And you're admitting it's not true and you're still trying to hold on to it, which makes it quadruple weird. It's, it's, it's holding on to two opposing thoughts at the same time. And I do that a lot. That's weird. Well, then I'm weird, but no, no stop do doing that. it. No. Yeah. Or it's the whole thing. I it's think a problem. the ability to hold on to two competing thoughts at the same time and get both of them the yin yang is is the entire thing sure but not in this not yes yin and yang is the answer to everything it's the positive there's no positive without the negative they have to come together there's no balance 100 percent. except in a real human being saying i'm the best but i'm getting better that, yeah. that's not human the way where, where it doesn't work where, where all where you go through the looking glass is when you enter human emotion where emotion is it? So I'm with you on all of that. I need to get way better. I need to receive more. I need to compliment more. I need to express more. A hundred percent. I'm with you down. Like I'm looking for exercises to do. I appreciate you cutting me off and say, don't go into a story. Tell me, thank you. I just said, I love you. And you just went on. I pre yes, I need to get better. The disconnect that this all started from was you said that you feel like I don't have self-esteem or started with self-love and became self. I don't, I don't understand that connection because I feel like I'm great and I need to get better. So the willingness to accept compliments isn't because I feel like I'm better than somebody else. I feel like I don't, I don't, I don't need the emotional support, not because I'm afraid of it. I just don't, I don't feel like I need it. I feel like I love myself. So it's either the whole thing or it's nothing, right? Because mm -hmm. it's such a blind spot, then it's the entire thing. Then like, I actually have zero love for myself, zero, and breaking that down is the whole thing. Because I feel like I love myself so much. And that's actually why I don't need compliments and I don't need emotional. I'm not, I'm not like, I'm not proud of it. I don't walk around saying, I don't need your compliment. 
you suck. I'm amazing. Like, I don't okay. feel that way. So if you do love yourself that much, which is interesting and crazy to me, because I don't know anyone doing that, but that aside, it, there's still room for you to be fearful of letting people in. A hundred percent. Like this, like we're not editing this stuff out, right? Good. This is it. This is going up. Like, it's great. Why, why, why Steve and why, why Tess, a clinical psychologist and all this is like, rip it out, pull it apart and tell me I'm an idiot or here's where you suck and need to improve, right? Like that's the best. That's why we're doing this series. And hope, my hope too is in that it also encourages other people to then also be more vulnerable in themselves and like through watching me struggle through it, they get a little bit more permission to go off and do it for themselves. That's the only reason why I'm doing all of this stuff. I don't need to be famous. Like Steve gets so pissed at me because it's like the other people we work with, they want to be famous. I don't want to be famous. I have no, means nothing to me. But, but if you want to impact more lives. That's it, dude. As soon as you start talking about impact, then I'm in. But that's fame. I, I get it. That's why I'm doing this. <laughs> but it's not a need for me to like have a statue built. People, what's my legacy? I don't care about it. I have zero need for legacy. Like what am I doing while I'm alive? The trick to, to making me do anything, if you can tie it to impact somehow, I'm in. That's, I have, I've had to do the same thing for myself. And I avoid it for my own personal reasons. So I don't want fame or connection for my own personal reasons. But I know I am doing this and on air with you right now and in my life showing up in order to, because I know I can really help other people. And I do like that. And I like that for them. And I like that for me. Well, I'll That's have what drives me. We'll have Tess watch back this episode and see what she thinks on the whole self-love thing. Awesome. Give me some feedback. Um, but I appreciate all, all of that. I, I'm thinking now, like, how do I get it? I want to I wanna apply, right? Like, by the time we speak next month, stuff better have happened by then. Um, going back to the first thing about coaching people, and it's, I, I, I interpret as this is not just coaching on, on air, but it's coaching anybody. And it's every conversation. When I'm talking to my son or talking to my wife. Yes. Lead, lead with what I think. I want to get the formula down, the Hank Norman perfect discussion down. Be what I'm hearing now is before leading with the opinion, I need to figure out what that person's stuck with and the why, what's going on emotionally, what's the story behind the story, how it makes them feel, why is it so important? I get that. Then I do powerful opinion. Then I just start working through it. And break them down. Set the stage that you're bringing them yep. closer to that uncomfortable thing that's blocking them. But I just start helping them instead of teaching them. I'm yes, I'm zero, zero teaching, zero. It's uh, uh, teaching in action, not in. Don't speech teach. Right. No speeches. And just then, teaching. And then we want to see at the end that they are not stuck anymore. We yes. What made them stuck? We went through what, I, what I want to see is when you make them see the thing that's got them stuck is now, if possible, and it's not always possible depending on the person's problem, take that action in the moment. Right. Fix it right now. Right. Call the person you're angry with. Pick the word that defines you that you're scared to say represents you because you're fearful of not achieving that goal. Do it now. Right. I love it. Great. I want, I want them to feel unstuck or at least momentum towards being unstuck. And you've, you've modeled for me, the viewer, the path I need to take. Right. You're, you're using me. You're, this conversation has to shift where you're aware that this change, you're occur, this is occurring in this person you're coaching, is yep. for the person watching. And then after I've gotten the result, then we see them getting unstuck. Am I saying, here's what we did and, and give them the template? Then there's Just like you're doing now, you're rounding out the show, you're closing the show, right. same thing for the coaching session. Right. Here's what, dude, you had to pick your word, you had to do, and you, you go back, you go, you, you're awesome at this, the one, two, three, the logistics yeah. of it. Yeah. So yeah. for me, the viewer, this is not for this dumb person you just spoke to, they're transformed, they don't need the takeaway. That's right. for the right. audience. Right, okay, I got it. I know, <laughs> you're, all, you're quick. Now we gotta practice. Now you gotta do it. So you get to do a new coaching session, we can, whatever. Cool, man. I appreciate it. Thanks, Evan. The this, this structure is really helpful. And, um, and thank you for uh, sticking through it and the frustrations. 
I, I know you get it. And listen, I know that I'm also a way more interesting and fun client to work with than some others, but I appreciate you sticking with it and the, uh, and the care. The care. You're awesome, really. Thank you. Cool. If people want to find you, where are they going? Uh, as you say, Hank Norman on Twitter is where I'm the most active, but I'm, you know, I'm everywhere. We'll add a link to the description. You guys can go check it out. All right, guys, you know how much I love taking immediate action. I took Hank's advice and applied it to the very first person that I brought on to a coaching call with me today on Instagram Live. I tried to apply the techniques. I think I did a decent job, but I would love to get your feedback on it because I'm going to show Hank and hopefully make him proud. Here it is. When did you feel most worthless as a human being? Man, the last three years of my life, I was living by myself. I was using uh, a lot of cocaine. I was drinking a lot. I was gambling. I was smoking. And I was just going in no direction at all. And so I just made a decision that I was going to move to, to Poland. And uh, since I made that one decision, my life has just continued to evolve. I've always wanted more. And, and I did a speaking course last year. Man, it just opened my mind. And and obviously stopping the alcohol and the drugs. And, and that made me realize how powerful I was as a human to believe in myself that I can achieve whatever I've put my mind to and whatever I want. I uh, decided that I was gonna take charge of my life and I was gonna go out and create something by myself. You know, I've designed my own online course, which I'm promoting through Facebook. And, you know, I know how I changed my life last year and I wanna help others. Close your eyes and just try to think of Luke from six years ago who is relying on your brother. You're relying on him. You think he's going to take you to the promised land. I'm just going to give my money to him. He's going to take care of me. Just that feeling of you're not good enough and you need the people around you. Feel that Luke. Be that Luke again. You're not Luke 2.0 2019. You're Luke 2013 now. I want an emotional message from Luke 2019 to 2013 Luke. What do you want to tell 2013 Luke? Bro, you're good enough, man. You don't need to worry about what other people think of you or that you're not, you're not enough for yourself or that you're not confident enough or that you don't love yourself and then you don't believe in yourself. You need to stand up for yourself and, and wake up because you're enough. And this 2019 Luke loves you, bro, and you're amazing. And what happens if I don't change? My brother's going to take care of me. No, it's not the way life goes, man. You've got to do shit yourself. You can't rely on other people. You've got to make it happen. He's my brother. He's going to look after me. I'm going to give him, I'm going to give him my money. He knows what he's doing. What do I care? This is hard, man. I'm, like, you got my heart racing, bro. Far out. I don't this know how to the do game, this. Though. Like, this is the yeah. game. This is it. And listen, I don't know, I don't know 2013-year-old Luke. I'm just playing devil's advocate. But when you can learn to tap into the thing that it means so much to you that that person changes, that's when you'll actually make the connection that they will make the change. The people who you will help best are the ones who you've been through the same thing as them. Right? I can't talk about drugs. I've never done drugs. So don't talk to me about how to get over drugs. I can give you general advice, but like I'm not the guy. I don't have the same familiar family pressures and all that. But the people who you want to reach are 2013 Luke. And 2013-year-old Luke doesn't want to hear from 2019 Luke. And you have to make him hear. If I said to 2013-year-old Luke, hey, Luke, here's this Mind Valley program that you should go and learn how to be a speaker. What's 2013 Luke going to say? Like, ah, what? I don't want to do that. Yeah, like I was in a relationship with a, ten, a, ten, a woman who was 10 years older than me at that time. And she was pushing me to go do, to study and to, 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 to be better. And I was Great. only doing it because it was going to make her happy. Great. That's what you need to help. So how do you break through that at 2013, Luke? In the way that that girlfriend couldn't. That's the whole game. Right? And listen, listen, you don't have to have the answer now. Like, I'm pushing you because that's the game. When you figure that out, then your content starts to soar. Yeah, I got to relate to those to those people, you know. I had a I had a 20-year-old kid in my car and I was driving today and you need and, to relate uh, to yourself. You need to relate to the old yourself. The reason why I love helping entrepreneurs so much is because when I was 19 and I struggled so much as an entrepreneur and I was making 300 bucks a month and I told my business partner I quit because I feel 
worthless as a human being. That's what I see in entrepreneur. I don't want anybody to have to feel that same pain that I went through. And it's real. Like I can go back to that moment and see myself crying my face off and stuff coming out of my nose and my eyes and my mom coming over and putting her hand on my shoulder and saying something. I have no idea what she said because I was just lost as a human lost, felt absolutely worthless. And so I could, I could tap into that. And then it makes it, it makes the words important. Like I want you to win so badly at this and I have no idea who you are. We just met. <laughs> Hi, I'm Evan. <laughs> right? <laughs> but like that, that's the game. That's the game. Like when you see somebody who is like you, you need to figure out how to make that connection to them. You need to break through the 2013 loop or you don't win or you're just sounding like everybody else. So how do I do that? That's on you, man. Like you got it. That's why I was trying to get you to channel, like channel 2013 year old Luke. Like I would save this video, play it back and watch it or, or do it again yourself. Like I would do this. This is your speaker training every day until you get it. Turn your phone on, start press record, close your eyes, be 2013 Luke, be the punk, be the guy who doesn't listen to anybody, be the guy who's dating this girl who's telling him to do something. And he doesn't want to do it, but he doesn't want to lose her. So he's going to do it. Be the guy who's just, giving his money to his brother, doesn't want to take responsibility, forget it, I'll run away, I'll just take some cocaine, like that's what I'm gonna do. Be that guy, feel that guy, and then be pissed off at that guy, and then jump to 2019 and like strangle him. You need to break through to 2013 Luke. And then when you do that, your content is a different story. Like your content now is amazing. People will watch your stuff and say, holy cow, this guy Luke, like he, he connects to me. He speaks to me somehow. I have no, I've never met this guy, but he's speaking like right to my soul. I love everything yeah. you're saying. It's great. But again, it sounds like everybody else. And so, and I believe that you've got way more than, than what you're putting out now. It's great. And you're on your journey and you don't have to be perfect yet, but that's the training. And then every day you, you close your eyes, you picture that Luke, and then you, whatever you need to do, you need to scream at him. You need to hug him. You need to love him. You need to have empathy. You need to have rage. Go through the emotions and figure out what works. And then when you get it, when you open your eyes, that was it. Like, I connected to 2013 Luke. I connected to him. And then that's what you tap into every time when you're making your videos. So when you're telling me that I need to go live the best version of my life, great. If you just say the words, it's one thing. But if you're channeling 2013-year-old Luke, it's a whole different story. So do the work every day. Like, hang up now and go practice. <laughs> That's the best you're going to get from me. That's the best advice. Like, and you rock with that. And then, and then everybody you meet who has similar issues is 2013-year-old Luke. And then how do you make your Instagram content better? That's what you picture every time. 2013-year-old Luke and the message that he needs to hear today. So in, in terms of that, that's, that's what you're – putting me as targeting, right? But what about the rest of the world? If you're putting out fire content like that, it'll come to you. People will look at it and they'll share it and they'll love it and they'll say, this guy's speaking to me. Now your style will be different and that's okay. It's not gonna go to the world, everybody, right? All of the people that I profile, Eric Thomas, you know Eric Thomas? Yeah. Eric Thomas will yell his face off. He'll yell about everything. Like he's, he's always seems to be angry and like, He'll get you pumped up and motivated to do anything. Like, you got to go to the bathroom. You know, I'll get you excited to go to the bathroom. That's Eric Thomas. Um, I love Eric. Oprah Winfrey is going to hug you. I'm going to make you cry. I'm going to listen to you. But Oprah and Eric have 98% the same message. It's the same message you have. Mm. But your style will be different. Now, not everybody loves Oprah and not everybody loves Eric. That's okay. But you'll, you'll find these people. People will come and find you and say, man, I, this guy, the way that he speaks, the way that he's saying it, I know I've heard it a thousand times, but the way Luke says it, it just makes me do something. Sounds good. Don't I'm feeling worry about it. The, it's going to come. If you can learn to connect with 2013 Luke and actually get him to take that course and love taking that course instead of doing it for – the older girlfriend, that's when you win. Bring that energy to all your content, video content, every day, one-minute videos. People will follow you. People, you'll blow up.
I'm pumped to do a top 10 on you one day, man. Let's not make it too far. Fuck you... <laughs> it up, man. I would love that. That would be a dream come true, man. Yeah, man. You've got it. But that's the exercise. Yeah. And then when you can, when you watch your content, when you watch your closed eye video back and then, and you run through different emotions of, of yelling or hugging or happy or crying or, or rage or whatever you're cycling through when you feel it, like you should, you should get emotional feeling like, Holy cow. I just, we just did it. I did it. That was it. And now because you've recorded it, now you see what it looks like. Like you may have done the whole thing with your eyes closed, but you've recorded it. So now you see what you look like when you've hit the moment. You've got a recording of it. And so now you can tap into it. You're going to get it once and then, you, and then you won't get it again. And it's learning to consistently get there. But you have, you have the recording. And so you practice. You get back to it. You practice. That's the game, man. You need to get 2013-year-old Luke to do the work. The heart beat like, oh, my God, what I do. That's great. That's growth. <laughs> Yeah, man. Every day is is uh, unpredictable for me, and and everything that I'm doing is uh, is is mind blowing, you know. And, and to speak to you as well is is something that you know I didn't never even thought about. So I'm just pushing myself, man. I'm just continuously growing, and 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 uh, I'm not backing down, you know. There's no limit. I love it, man. I'm I'm cheering for you hard. You need to find the way to connect to 2013, Luke. Like by the end of the next week, practice every day. Like you want to be you want to be a world class speaker. That's the assignment. If you're practicing every day, you'll get there. If you if you do it once a month, you won't. Yeah, no, I'm I mean I'm on Insta every every day. I do my videos every morning. So yeah, but not with this, not with that intention. It's easy to go on Instagram and say, guys, like go live a great life, you know, do something that challenges you. It's important. You don't want to be in the same spot you are one year from today. Like there's no emotion. The words are great, but it's not the right energy. You have the right words. You have a great mission. You just don't have the right energy yet. And the energy you need is the one that will convince 2013 Luke to do something. Not because he's being forced to, but because you spark something in him and the light bulb went off and he realized, holy cow, that guy's right. Yeah, that's deep, man. Got practice, dude. So what do you think guys? Did I do a good job? Am I getting better? Let me know. Put in the comments below. Also, if you want to see my session with Tess, the psychologist, check out the video link right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe and I'll see you there.